Hey guys, Flatpak Effects here, and today we're going to be making this. So stick around, you're watching Flatpak Effects. Hey guys, welcome back to the tutorial. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this Polaroid slideshow effect where the Polaroid images are sort of being thrown onto the table. And in addition to this, I'm also gonna show you how to use the graph editor. Now, if you're only interested in how to use the graph editor, you can skip ahead to that section. Otherwise, you can learn how to make this entire effect as well. Now, before we get started, there's a few files you're going to want to download. The first is this Polaroid image, and the other is this wood background image that I've put in the description below. Now, the other thing I have here are these images I just took off the web, but this is where you can import your own images you'd like to use for this effect. So with that, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new composition. I'm going to call this one layout one and make sure this is set to 1080 25. And I'm also gonna make sure my duration is set to about 30 seconds and then hit okay. Next, I'm gonna right click and create a new composition and call this one BG for background and then hit okay. And we're going to drag this wood layer straight into that composition. Now I'm just using this wood layer as my background image, but this can be whatever you want. But first I'm gonna rotate this image and just move to a part that I actually want to use. And the other thing I did here was I just came up to effect, added a little bit of sharpen here, and also added some curve effect as well. Next, I'm gonna right click and create a new solid. I'm gonna set my color to be black, and I'm going to come up here and hold my mouse clicker until I get the ellipse tool here, and I'm just gonna draw a rough mask something like that. I'm gonna come down here and hit invert on the mask settings and just give this a bit of a feather. And I'm also gonna turn down the mask opacity so we get a little bit of vignette on the edge here. Okay, now coming back to my layout one, we can start by dragging that background composition in. Next, I'm gonna grab my Polaroid image and drag it onto this icon here to create a new composition. Now I'm gonna to navigate to that composition and we're just going to rename this one to Polaroid One. And next we can just drag an image in here. So I'm just gonna select an image and drag it under my Polaroid layer and then scale this down until it fits into that background there. So this is what we end up with here. Now I've already put a drop shadow on the Polaroid image for you just to help sell the overall effect. Now that's all we need to do in this composition. So we can come back to layout one and we're going to grab that Polaroid one composition and drag that on top of our background. So this is what we get now. Now next, we want to make our Polaroid image a 3D layer. So we select our layer and we tick this little box here to make it 3D. And we're also gonna right click and create a new light. Now I'm gonna make sure this is set to spot. We want the intensity to be 141. The cone angle we can set to 110. And the cone feather we can set to 100%. Now we also wanna make sure the car shadows is on. And we wanna set our shadow darkness to be 70%. And our shadow diffusion we're also gonna to set to 350. Now once you've entered in those, we can just hit OK, and this is what we get now. Next, we wanna come down to our Polaroid One image and come down to our material options. And where it says car shadows, we wanna turn this on. And we also wanna make sure our background layer is also a 3D layer. But with our background layer, we wanna navigate down to the material options, and we wanna make sure that accept lights is off. Now the reason we do this is we don't want the main light to affect our background image, we only want it to cast shadows. So when we select our Polaroid image, if I grab the blue Z axis and just move it slightly towards me, you can see it's already starting to cast a shadow on the background layer. Next, we're going to position the light so that it's casting the shadow from the right direction. Now I select my light layer here and I grab my blue Z axis and just move this up. So this is moving it away from our background here. And I'm also gonna shift this up slightly and shift it across. So 
So you can see the effect we're getting is it's casting a shadow on the left hand side as the light source is on the right. Now I'm just going to drop this intensity down slightly just so it doesn't affect our image too much here. And then that's pretty much done. So our light is in the right position now. Now the aim of this effect is we want it to look like the Polaroid images are being thrown onto the table. Now the first part of this is we have to set our in and out points for this effect to work. Now what we need to do is come down to transform. We're going to create a keyframe for position and a keyframe for orientation. Then we're going to move, if I zoom in here, to roughly about half a second, which is 12 frames, and create another key point for our position and orientation. The other thing I'm going to add here is I'm going to give it a slight Z rotation, just because I don't want it sitting flat on the table, but that's up to you how you want it to end up on the table, the position and rotation. And if I go back to my beginning keyframes, I'm going to grab my Z axis and move this towards me. So I'm going to scale this up and I'm also just going to drag it off the bottom of our screen here. Now if we just played this, you can see it doesn't look very natural. It just kind of looks like it's being thrown in and it doesn't look very smooth or natural. So this is where we can start to mess around with the line editor and the graph editor. So the first thing I notice is we've got these little tabs that stick out here from when we first created these keyframes. Now if I was just to grab one of these and move it, you can see it's creating a bit of a curve on that line. So basically you've got to try and think of this in a three dimensional space. So if I move this on the side, because we're starting from a higher point ending on a lower point, it's sort of moving in and then moving towards the right as it moves towards the table. So if I move this more central, it's sort of on a slight arc if we were to look at this from the side. Now the other thing I can do here is it stays flat the whole way through its animation. And we want it to start as if the photo was standing upright. So we can do this by adjusting these three axes here at our first keyframe position. If I grab the X axis here and just rotate it upright, I can also do a slight twist here. And as I play through this, you can see that it starts upright and then moves into a more flat position as it hits the table. So this just makes it look a little bit more natural as it moves into frame. Now the other thing we can do here is I can take these two end keyframes, just right click them and make them easy ease in. Now this is where we start to get into the graph editing side of this. Now the best way to think of this is if you put your arm out and drop a tennis ball. Now the tennis ball will accelerate. So it'll start slow and get faster and faster until it hits the ground. Now that's what we perceive as a natural animation. There's a change in speed as it's moving over time. So we need to apply that same principle to our animation inside the computer. Now we have done this up until this point using keyframes and keyframe assist to create that sort of illusion. But another way of doing this is using the graph editor. Now we access the graph editor by clicking this button up here and that changes the layout of our timeline here. Now at the moment we don't see anything but if we select the layer and select one of these transform properties you can see we get these lines appearing. Now what we're seeing here is our green, red and blue lines which is a direct representation of our y, x and z axes. Now the view that we actually want to shift to is I'm going to come down here and select this button and I'm going to go to the edit speed graph. Now this is the same layer, the same position, but we're looking at it in a different graph, which is pixels per second on the left over time. Now we've already established that dropping a ball, the speed is going to change over time, which looks more natural. So this is what is represented in this graph. So at the beginning of time, which is zero, it's increasing in speed and then it starts to decrease towards the end. If I click on one of these little buttons here, we get these little lines that come out. So I can actually move this down and I can move this one up to change the way that animation plays out. 
Now, as this is only an introduction to the graph editor, I'm not going to spend too much time going into, into a lot of detail, but it's really just a process of trial and error by moving these around and adjusting these to get different results. Now, it can take a while to get used to the graph editor as it's a different way of editing. But if you can master the graph editor, your animation movements will benefit a lot. Now, once you're happy with your graph position, the only other things you need to know down here is you can use this tool here to auto adjust the height of the graph. So if I shifted this right up, it'll automatically adjust so we can see what's going on. And these buttons down here will also add easy ease, easy in and easy out, which is the same as right clicking on the keyframes and then adjusting them. So once you're done, you can just hit this graph editor to close that. And the last part of this is we're going to take our Polaroid image and turn on motion blur. And I'm also gonna right click and go to my composition settings and across to advanced, and I'm going to change the shutter angle to be 180, and this shutter phase to be 90. And all that's doing is affecting the amount of motion blur that we're going to see on those motion blurred layers. Now, if I just play through what we've got here, this is what it should look like. So you can see the movement looks quite natural. Now, all we need to do here is for your next image, we're gonna take our Polaroid one composition and just come up to effect and down to duplicate. We're also gonna to go to our layout one and also duplicate that layer again in the composition. And if I select that Polaroid one layer we've just duplicated, come up and also select my Polaroid two in my project window, I can hold option or alt and just replace that composition with number two. Now, if I double click that, I can then drop my next image in, delete the image underneath, just resize this image, come back to my main composition and just offset this next composition to come in slightly later. And the other thing we'll need to do is navigate down to our transform properties. Make sure your playhead is lined up with that last keyframe. And we're just going to move this slightly up because we're stacking the layers on top of each other. So we don't want them to be sitting on the same level. We want it to be sitting on top of our last layer. And I'm also just gonna add a little bit of rotation the opposite way. And if you select all those keyframes, I can just shift this over slightly. So it looks like it's a different image. And if I just play through that, you can see this is what we've got now. So that's a really easy way to create this effect. Now, if you wanna add more images, you just keep repeating that process of duplicating the compositions and just keep replacing them in the main timeline. Now, you don't have to have them stack up on top of each other. You can have them lay out next to each other on the table. You can shrink the size down and you can position them however you like. So there you go, guys. There's a really quick and easy way to make this effect. I hope you've learned something in this tutorial. Now, if you'd like to know more about graph editing or any of my tutorials, you can put a comment in the description below. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.